Hello everybody, and this is Paul here, and I'm going to show you a Blender 2.69. I'm just going to mess around with some surface scattering, just a quick uh, run of that. I've seen some other people do stuff with it, so I thought I found a way that will make it a little simpler to work with. So I'm going to show you the Node Edit setup for subsurface scatter. So let's get rid of the default cube here. And I'm going to add our monkey head. Where is it? Ash. There it is. Good old Suzanne here. And got to make sure it's the cyclist, so let's do that. Try this here. Switch the cycles. And materials applied, use nodes. Add a mesh for a backlight. This is plain. degrees. Let's fill that about three times. Give it a new material. Really have to name it this time. We're going to set it to emission. Give it strength uh, 5. Give it that color. Yeah, let's do a quick test render. See what it's doing. Okay, that's working. Let's get out of that. So we got our Suzanne here. And let's see. Background, set the strength to 2. Just get background light, that's good. No uh, ambient occlusion, so we don't need that. Drag this light over. This is going to be my general foreground light here. This radial lamp. Setting up the lighting right now. So that's part of rendering too. So. That's fine. That actually, this went 500. Color is going to be black body of 300 degrees Kelvin. There. And add another light. Spot. Yeah, it takes a little while to set it up. <laughs> and now you're wondering, where are you going to get to your nodes? I'll get to your nodes, don't worry about it. Don't worry just yet. It takes a while to get the lighting set up. This one, I kind of like it as a shadow culture kind of light. So what I'm going to do is set this lamp to a blue color. Each purpley color. So... Set it a little bit lower. Soft blend. And... Hit zero to go to my camera. Select the camera frame, hit N. Lock camera to view and navigate to the better spot. And I'm going to set my render size to. Just gonna catch Suzanne here almost head on. And now stop blocking the camera. 
do a quick render. And it's like that. And for subsurface scatter, it helps to have. Oh, you want to make a smooth modifier, subdivision surface. It's fine and smooth. And we're close to where we want for our start. Setting things up. Now we got things set up for rendering and let's see your subsurface skittery. So what do we want to do next? What do we want to do next? We have render settings. Something quick. For subsurface scattering, it seems so good to set the light paths to full global. It looks better that way. My personal preference is to bump up the filter for glossy to around 12 or so. And that's fine. Performance, I do this for my computer. I usually just set this to slightly smaller bidding. Since I'm recording, I'm probably going to give this some less threads. Auto detect give you all your cores, but I'm gonna do a little bit less so I can keep recording when I render. So let get higher settings. What else do I wanna do? I get some more samples. Samples good. Render I probably want about sixty starting out. Alright. Now let's get to Positing. Here's our nodes. Okay, we don't need that up here. Turn this window to 3D view as well. And to the camera view, just like the other window, but I will change this one to rendered. Alright. So, our default node setup is diffuse. We want is oops, not that one. There. We want to change the material to a subsurface scattering. Where is it? Subsurface scattering. I don't know if you can notice here even on ten samples, but subsurface scattering is one of those shaders that really doesn't work so great by itself. Even at higher samples, it looks weird. So you always want to mix this with something else. Which is usually a diffuse, glossy, or glass. So sure, we always... When you use subsurf, always put a mixer on it. And I'm going to mix it with diffuse that happens to be mixed with a glossy, so I'm going to do that. And just bear with me here, I'm not as fast as I'd like to be, but I had to set stuff up. <laughs> but you can get a nice lot. So, so you always want to make subsurface with some other shader. So. There's a reason for it too. Because when you have light hitting it on this side, on the side facing you, subsurface really doesn't account for that to the full extent. It accounts for light penetrating the object mesh, but not really much for the light hitting the surface of the object. Thus, subsurface. All right. So, we put a diffuse on there. Now already you can see that the surface detail is showing up that you couldn't see before. And I want the bias in this one towards the diffuse, so a lower value. And you can see I'm building up my nodes here. 
some logic to it. So we got a factor here. So and three should be good. See a lot of the node set up for your shaders is just a little bit of tweaking here. But as you know, you, like I said, I'm gonna go back to default and let's do a regular render to see how it looks. It's not too slow. You see this looks kinda nice. So we have our diffuse giving us the light hitting it on the front. But the subsurface accounts for the light penetrating it from the back. And you can see it is working because on a thinner area is like the ears and mouth, you can see the light coming through and being scattered. So it is working nicely. And uh, the fuse catches light here, and you have the glossy showing your highlights reflecting. So it's a good start up. So now, what we will we do next? We will do go back to compositing. And the reason I just switched over real quick like this is because this is only, this is the preview render at 10 samples. So, the main thing I wanted to show you is that radius gives you these values for red, green, and blue. I don't know if they're labeled. Yeah, they just say unconnected socket, but these are red, green, and blue here. There's only one input, which is like a bluish color, so I guess that's a vector input. But we will be using colors, because colors is RGB instead of XYZ or UVW, depending on which way you're going with it. So we will add a input, I guess. Input. And RGB is an input. And this input will be going to the radius. And we will add Converter, separate RGB. We want to split our RGB. So, we have this input color here. Three outputs for the RGB. Oops, I don't want to grab that. I just want to scroll up. So now we have red, green, and blue output as separate channels. So we do math converter, multiply. have our multiply channels here. I believe we can duplicate that. Lose that hotkey here, nude. Duplicate is shifty. Okay. I wasn't too worried about that. So as you notice, uh, sure how RGB outputs are handled here, but I figured they probably go from 0 to 1, I'm guessing. It might be uh, 0 to 255, but I'm thinking it's 0 to 1. I think it's a decimal color here. So, what we do is we have an outer input for intensity, which is why I added the multiply nodes. And that should be a value. Oop. I don't want that. I want to add an input. And value. There. So this one is red. This one is green. This one is blue. And now we multiply them all by the same value. So. It's a little cluttered, but it's good. But as you notice, this radius, even though it contains three values, it only has one input socket. So there's no way to input red, green, blue. Because if I try to drag this like that, and try to drag the next one, and what's it going to do? It's going to hop down to the next socket of the same type. So that does not work. So what we do is we add converter, and combine red, green, blue. And even though this is a yellow color socket, it will go into that blue vector or purple socket. So what we're doing is we're taking the 
intensity value here, the strength or whatever you want to call it, multiplying it by that color. So it would go red, oh, this one's red, this one's green, this one's blue, oh, felt connect, there we go. And we take this yellow one and we plug it into the radius input. And what this color does is normally you'd have to kind of guess like how strong you want the red, green, blue, and stuff where the light shines through. But in here, it's real easy. You just drag on the color wheel, and as you can see in the preview render, I can see how the colors are affecting where the light shines through right away. I don't have to guess like what, how much red, green, or blue. I can control intensity with brightness, how strong it's showing through that way, or I can multiply all three values with this strength slider to make it brighter or darker. As you can see, it is working fairly nice. And I don't really need to do a whole lot more than that. I mean, you still have these other settings, but for something real simple, a quick setup like this, you can get a pretty nice subsurface scatter by using this color input, separating RGB channels, multiplying them by this value, so now you're not guessing how much red, green, blue, you just drag it and you can look in a preview render to see right away how your subsurface scatter color is affected. You have, this is like somewhat the surface color, but you pretty much want this color and the one in your diffuse channel to be about the same. So, if you got like a skin tone color, fleshy color, match or be close. You could probably have another color channel inputting just these two. It's not necessary, but something to consider. But pretty much this part here makes figuring out the values for your three radius inputs a lot faster, easier, and trying to input manually and guess which three numbers you use. But that's just something I wanted to show you. It kind of it proves this. You can probably group it all group all this into a group <laughs> with your subsurface scatter for a composited uh, subsurface shader, simplified one. So let's go back to the fall and let's see how Suzanne renders at, what is it, samples? These are samples. Here it is. We want to push this up to like 60. That'll probably be a good number. Good quick number, and let's hit render. Here it goes. Already right, looks like skin or fleshy material, is it? My backlight will show us how it looks subsurface sampling. <laughs> Or subsurface scattering, you should say. <laughs> I don't want to mix my terms up. Yeah. Alright. Just a touch of glossiness on it. It's picking up the main light and the shadow light. So the lighting setup I did is nice. And you can see the backlight and the color that I went with showing through. Especially in the thinner part of the ears and stuff. But that little node setup kind of idiot proofs it, so you know it's. You don't have to guess. <laughs> like, what's red, what green, blue, how strong do I make it? Well, you, I just simple it down to a color picker and a slider, and it makes it a lot simpler. So. Yeah. It's not like any, 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 any with the values, you just go. Alright, this is the one I want. No, that's how it looks. There you go. You can get much better results in this. It's just something quick and dirty. Gives you an idea. There you go, that's Susan for you. Enjoy, have fun, Blender.